Hello everyone, PJ or Team America here, and today I'm going to be talking about the new mercenaries in the 21.6 patch notes. So, the mini set's coming. Exciting for standard players. And they are adding five new mercenaries. So, let's just dive right into them. The first one is Edwin. Defies Kingpin. He's a legendary fighter. He's a pirate and his abilities are Assassin's Blade Speed 5 attack an enemy. If it hasn't acted this turn gain 5 attack and health and attack it again. Pretty good. Uh, 5 speed. So typically the slowest move you use turn 1 will have at least 5 speed. So at least at worst you're looking at like a 50-50 going into a uh, Varden or something. So, and so what is that? 26 plus 36. So that's like 62 damage into a Varden if you attack before it. Um, that's pretty insane. Assuming it's maxed, which I mean will take a long time considering. Um, so yeah, so all these, the five mercenaries, they're going to just be added in the packs, is how you get them. Um, there's not like a special pack or anything. Similar to how the mini set just gets added, the packs. Um, so, also, his second move is Assisted Strike. Speed 5 cooldown 1, gain 5 attack for each friendly pirate, and attack... A random enemy combo gain immune while attacking this turn. So, I mean, probably like when you require to have other pirates on the board, that's going to be pretty tricky to do. Um, attacking a random enemy is, I mean, if you do this without being, it's like a faster die insect which honestly isn't that good um so i i'm pretty hesitant and then kingpin's bounty speed four cooldown two which is really long deal 10 damage to an enemy repeat for each other pirate you control so because this says cooldown two typically you use moves with cooldown two when you bring someone off the bench um basically brucon's chain lightning is the only exception to this of a cooldown 2 move that you get off pretty regularly um, at, for a starter. And if you're bringing something off the bench, it's hard to satisfy the requirement of having a specific type on the board. So, and even if you did, like, even if you had two pirates on the board already, you're dealing 30 damage for a cooldown 2 move which is absolute trash compared to something like Avenging Wrath. Um, yeah, Deathblow Restore 25 health, but... I mean, there is a decent amount of blue in the meta, but like, if there isn't blue, this is just worthless. Um, his equipments are Black Flag, Adjacent Pirates are 4 Faster, which is pretty good if you have good pirate if pirates are a real thing. Um, Force speed is no joke. Force speed is endurance or a speed, so that that's really freaking fast. Um, round of drinks, assisted strike is three faster and always has immune while attacking. Um, I mean, if you're going up against like three blue or something, it might be okay, but I I don't like it. And even shares kingpin's bounty restores ten more health and affects all friendly characters. Like that's nice. It's just it's really hard, I think, to satisfy death blows. Because, like, typically, like... Like, some comps are killing you slowly. Like, everything slowly. But other comps are killing one thing at a time. And if you're killing one thing at a time, the death blow isn't very good. Alright, moving. So... I mean, so I think Edwin has some potential, but it's not... It's It's relatively bleak 
Um, next is Sneed. You might remember him from Sneed's old Shredder, the GBG card. Um, another pirate, max dot at 777. Um, which I think is a little low on the health. Abilities. Bzzz. Speed 6, deal damage equal to your attack if activate saw is active. Also damage the target's neighbor. I don't understand why it says neighbor. I, I assume it can only hit one neighbor. Also damage target's neighbor. Like, I feel like it should say damage... I, okay, I guess that is right. It's only going to hit one target's neighbor. Um, so you can control it if you go to the outside. Activate Saw. Speed 3, cooldown 1. Gain 6 attack for 2 turns. Attack a random enemy. So, and Disarm. Speed 3, cooldown 1. Attack an enemy. Give it minus 5 attack permanently. So Disarm seems pretty terrible. Um, equipment. Skull Dust. Bzz, gains 5 bleed. Um, I don't really like it that much. I mean, it, it's like you can make it so that a green gets 5 bleed turn 1, and it, so it's taking 10 damage a turn, but um, I don't like it that much. Titanium Blades, Activate Saw, gives plus 4 attack and lasts one more turn. That could be okay, but I think the only thing that you would really be running on them is extra blades. Sneed starts with activate saw active for one turn. So basically you can start and have the um, activate saw active so that you can... It'll start with 11 attack and you can do that to two minions. Hopefully at least one of them is green and you're doing 22 damage turn one um, to something. Which is, it's pretty decent. It's it's pretty hard to blow up a red unless you're nature comp. Like, Malfurion, Brucon, um, Guff. But the thing is, like, if you have those three, you can act, you can blow this up before it even attacks. So, um, uh, not a big fan. So, now we have Yadora, an epic fighter. Um, Another pirate, 1078 stats maxed out. Um, first move, coup de tat. Speed 4, attack an enemy. If it's the left or right most enemy, fire Yodora's cannon at it. The thing is, they don't tell us what a cannon is, which is a little annoying. Hopefully it does 10 damage. It might only do like 5 damage. Um, prepare the cannons. Speed 7, cooldown 1, seven, summon a cannon to the left or right of this merc. Starts off cooldown. Oh! Okay, so you can do this turn 1. Wait, or is the cannon on cooldown? I'm confused. Does anyone understand that? I actually don't know. But maybe that means that this starts, like it has a cooldown of 1, but it's you can use it turn 1. I read this before and I didn't understand it, but I'm pretty sure that's what this means. Um, and then covering fire speed 7, cooldown 1. Restore 12 health to a friendly merc and then return it to your bench. Fire all your cannon. Um, I mean, that could be okay. I'm curious, like... So it doesn't, like, swap like Brightwing does, I think? But, um... I mean, covering fire seems okay. So, uh, the, uh, the equipments are cannon deals five more damage. Seems unlikely to be useful. Um, primed armaments, battle cry, summon a cannon, or briny bracers, passive, plus two, plus ten. So I think it'll either be the stats or you start with a cannon. Um, we'll have to see how good the cannon is. And that will determine how good Yodora is. Like, if the cannon is just like a 0-10 that does 5 damage, this won't be playable. But if it's like a 0-20 that does 10 damage, that that could be pretty decent. I doubt it would be a 0-20. But um, hopefully they do at least 10 damage. 
I wish they told us what the cannons were. But, um... Like, I think starting with a cannon could be pretty good. But having to use your entire turn just to summon a cannon... Feels pretty fucking bad. Also, like, if the cannons are too small... Like, you're giving your opponent a chance to satisfy their death blows. So, um, yeah, it really depends on how good the cannons themselves are. So, we'll see. So, Mr. Smite, I guess he's the guy from the trailer that I haven't even watched yet. Uh, he's another pirate, he's a rare protector, and rares, I mean, I should just call them commons, because they're the most common unit um 775 max stats smite slam speed eight gain five attack for each enemy with 40 or less health attack an enemy so you get to direct where you're going at least um having enemies with 40 or less health is not super common um if there is anything that's summoned it'll always have less than 40 health so that can help but um yeah, speed 8, that's pretty freaking slow for what you're getting. Um, a vast Yamady. B2, gain taunt this turn. Uh, there's no cooldown after an enemy attacks a smirk, gain 5 attack. That's that's actually pretty decent. Um, gaining taunt at speed 2. Um, this could be decent against like a Samuro or something. So, because you're, like, I, let's say a Samaro attacks you twice, you gain 10 attack, next turn you're at 17 attack. It's, it's not terrible. Um, and it can, it can protect, yeah, I could see this, um, like being ran with Zarela, Samaro maybe. It's just, like, Varden is just better probably, but, yeah, that's not... It's a, that's a good move. And then overboard speed 3 cooldown 1 after another friendly character is damaged this turn. The so speed 3. Um, gain plus 10 health and attack a random enemy. So that's also, um, that's also pretty decent. Uh, you can also combo that with something like, um, Sarfang. So that, like, you get two attacks off. So this guy's this guy has some potential, I would say, even though he's the most common one so far. Um, Sailor's Cap, Mr. Smite gains an additional plus four attack from Smite Slam. I think Smite Slam is his worst move by far. Heavy Anchor Overboard gains plus six attack. If the damaged friend is a pirate, that is awful. Sharpened, scabbard, whenever another friendly pirate attacks gain. So I don't, the fact that um, whenever another friendly attack, pirate attacks, man. So I was reading his abilities and I was like, this guy might be decent, but um, holy smokes, his equipment sucks. Wow, that is awful. Okay, this guy's... I don't know. Um, I'm pretty underwhelmed with the pirates. I'll be honest, because... If he had, like, a decent equipment that didn't rely on pirates or help his worst move, he'd be decent. But wow, that equipment is absolutely awful. Um, and then we have Cookie the Cook, a murloc with six... 70 max stats, pretty weak. Um, Fish Feast, nature spell speed 2, deal 10 damage to an enemy, death blow, give 15 health to all friendly characters. Pretty terrible. Um, cookie Cooking, speed 5, cooldown 1, bleed 5 to all enemies, restore 5 health to friendly murlocs and pirates. That's... That could be worse. Um... That could be worse. Um, go fish, speed 4 cooldown 1, summon a random fish for your opponent with a 
death rattle that benefits you. I mean, it depends on the fish, but it's unlikely to matter at all. Um, so, equipment. Seasons panned. Fish feast gives plus 5 attack as well. The death blow on a skill that does 10 damage, so... Pretty terrible. Iron ladle. Cookies cooking restores an additional 5 health. Mediocre. And appetizer start a game. Each friendly character gains plus 9 health. I mean, that's really cool. That's, that's actually amazing. Plus 27 health. But it's attached to Cookie, who sucks. Um, so I'm not super sold on this character. Um, we'll see. I mean, Murloc. I don't think Murlocs are that far off of being decent, but um, I don't think Appetizers affects minions on the bench. Wait. Actually, wait, appetizer is a start of game, so that that affects minions on your bench as well. And you don't have to start with cookie, do you? So maybe, maybe that's good enough. Maybe that's a really good appetizer, but um, that equipment is actually pretty tempting. I think it's actually plus 54 health, which is pretty significant. It might be good in, like, maybe this replaces Ragnaros. Uh, Bleed is, like, kind of like poison from other games. Um, so, like, if you have Bleed 5, you take 5 damage at the end of your turn. Um, okay, okay. Looking at Appetizer 4, I think Cookie has some potential. But, yeah. Um, overall, I would say that the Mercenaries are underwhelming. I do see potential for them, but I don't think any of them are, like, no-brainer. Um, other than maybe this equipment from Cookie. I could see that that seems pretty interesting to me. I think I would experiment with that and um, in some of my comps. Everything else is uh, pretty shaky at best. So, um, but yeah. Um, let me know what you guys think. Please be sure, if you're on YouTube, please be sure you like, subscribe, comment. Um, let me know what you guys think. Join the Discord and check me out everyday twitch.tv slash Team America. Thanks for watching.